Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade with another Coding Fundamentals in GML 2.3 update. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the basics of writing your own functions. Writing your own functions is essential. It allows you to make code and reuse it later, turning complex actions into a single line. It prevents code duplication, and it also makes debugging easier, saving you time and energy. So how do you write functions? Well, just like the built-in or runtime functions, your functions, the ones that you write, should do something. That's the most important thing. And then the next thing you know about them is that they may take one or more inputs called arguments, and they may provide one and only one output. And we're going to go through each of these three things in this order. But before we do that, let's revisit the function diagram. So here we have our function, which does something. It can take inputs, which are called arguments, and these are optional, so you don't need to have inputs to a function and then it returns some value. Again, the return is also optional. Functions don't necessarily need to return something. So input, do something, output. Now there are two ways to write functions in GameMaker Studio 2.3. The first form is a named function. To create a named function, you write the word function, then you write the name that the function will be, then you include any arguments that you want in the parentheses, and then you write any code that you want to run down here, and if you were to have a return statement, it would be down here as well. The second way to make a function is an unnamed function. To make an unnamed function, you write function, then you add any arguments you want in the parentheses, and then you write the code you want the function to perform inside the brackets. One thing I want to point out, and I'll have more tutorials on this, is that this form of writing a function by itself is useless. This will create a function, but unless you do something with it immediately after creating it, it won't have any value. Still, this is actually one of the most common ways to write functions, and so it's important to be able to recognize this form. So now let's actually write some functions. We'll start with a very simple function that prints hello world to the output window. So here you can see what we were talking about before. We have the word function, then we have the name of the function, which we'll call print hello. We don't have any arguments, and then we have what the function does, show debug message, hello world. We could also create an unnamed function that does the same thing, with function, parentheses, and then show debug message, hello world. So now let's talk about arguments. Arguments are the data that you pass into the function, and they can be any data type. So you can pass in a string, a number, a Boolean, an array, a struct, an instance ID. You Really, you can pass in anything. You can name the arguments whatever you want, but again, I want to stress that functions do not need arguments. So here is an example of a function with an argument. So again, named function would be function, and then the name of the function, which we'll call print in this case, and then the argument. So this is our argument, and you can see that we've named it message. You don't need to prefix your arguments with an underscore, but I generally do. And now you can see that we're using this argument down here, show debug message, and then we're taking whatever was passed in, and we're going to print it to the output. Again, you can see the unnamed version down here, which is just function, message, show debug message, and then the argument being used right here. So that's creating a function that does something, passing an argument into that function. Now let's talk about returning a value from a function. A function can return one and only one value. But just like how you can pass in any type of data as an argument, you can also return any type of data from a function, which means that you can return not just a string or a number, but you can return an entire data structure. You could return an instance ID. Essentially, you can return data that holds other data. Just as with arguments, functions do not need a return value. And if you do return a value, you must do something with that value for it to be meaningful. We'll see an example of this in the next tutorial. So here we have a function, add five. This is the named version. We're passing in a value. We're adding five to that value. So whatever number we pass in, we're going to add five to it. And then we're going to return the results. So if we passed in zero, zero plus five would equal five. We would return five. If we passed in 15, 15 plus five would equal 20. We would return 20. And then we have, again, the unnamed function, function, value, which does the same thing, adds five to that value and returns the result. So here we have a function that does all three things. It takes in an argument, it does something, and then it returns a value. Last, but certainly not least, we have using a function. So say you've written a function, how do you actually use the function? Well, it's very straightforward. To use a function, you simply put parentheses after the function name, or the variable holding a function. And if that last part doesn't make sense, don't worry, we'll have a whole tutorial on it. For demonstration purposes, we'll use our named functions. If there are any arguments, they go inside of the parentheses. So for example, our named function, print hello, 
we type the name, print hello, and then open parentheses, close parentheses. Print hello takes no arguments, so you don't need to put anything in the parentheses. For print, which does take an argument, we put the argument, in this case start tests, inside of the parentheses. For add five, which takes both an argument and provides a return value, you can see we write the name and then open parentheses, close parentheses, we put the argument inside of the parentheses, and as we said, you have to save the return value to something for it to be useful. So we're saving the return value to a variable called value one. So this function will run, add five to 10, give us the number 15, return that, and 15 would be saved to value one. If we just called add five, like we did these top two functions, it would return the value 15, but that value 15 wouldn't go anywhere. And so this function would essentially have done nothing. And that's not very helpful. But let's switch over to GameMaker Studio and see some more examples. Here we are in GameMaker. And for this demonstration, I'm simply going to use the named function version. I've created four functions over here. The first three are the ones we've already talked about, except that I changed show debug message to show message. So we'll get a pop-up on the screen here. And then the fourth function simply adds three numbers together, X, Y, and Z. And here you can see why I use underscores, because it allows me to say things like X, Y, and Z without having a conflict with the built-in variables X and Y. So I've created four functions over here, and now we're gonna use those functions right over here. So we'll call our first function, print hello. We should get a pop-up message that says hello world. Then we'll call print start tests. So here we're passing in an argument. The argument is a string that says start tests. We come over here, that argument should come down to show message and it should pop up. We should get a message that says show tests. Then we're gonna add five to the number 10 and save that result to value one. So like we talked about, add five return something, but for this to be useful, we actually have to put that value somewhere. So this function right here is returning a number, 10 plus five, and we're saving the result to the variable value one. Then we'll call our function print value one, so we can see what we've got. And then we have our final function, add three numbers, which will pass in three different numbers. So we'll pass in value one, which we created up here, and then the numbers 14 and one, and we'll add all three of these numbers together, and we'll save the result to value two. Again, we're using the return function right here to return the result, and then we're saving that result to this value. And finally, we'll print value two, and then print end test. All right, let's run this. Okay, so we got our first pop-up, hello world, exactly what we would expect from print hello. Our second pop-up, start test, there we go. We passed in this argument, came over here, and it printed out the message, 15, 30, so 15, 14, and one, and finally, end tests, and there you go. So in summary, you can write your own functions. There are two ways to write them, named functions and unnamed functions. And while there are important differences to these functions, which we'll cover in future tutorials, in one sense, they are very similar. They can take an input, then they do something, then they can return an output. And the primary value of writing your own functions is that you can take complex actions and turn them into a single reusable line of code that you can call over and over again. As always, the links in this slide will be below, along with links to the slides themselves and the source code. And that's it. Thanks for watching.